G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It is time for another Phantom Draft ahead of the 2023 draft, which is of course kicking off on November 20th. Uh, that'll be the first round anyway. Uh, the 21st will be the rest of the draft. And then I think the 22nd, my 30th birthday, that will be uh, the rookie draft and preseason draft and whatever else is left. So we've got a few weeks to go, a couple weeks even. I did a post-trade period uh, Phantom Draft you know, a number of weeks ago now. And uh, this time the difference is I'm going to have a crack at doing the entire draft. So I've got about 58 picks, 58, 59 selections in this draft, which means I'll probably move through the picks pretty quickly. And uh, I've done a little bit of legwork trying to map out exactly, well, the exact order for a start. That gets really hard once you take out academy picks. And I've probably made a few mistakes, so bear with me on that. And I've also had to try and research how many picks different clubs are willing to take or are going to take in this upcoming draft. So what I've done is I've done a little spreadsheet that I'll just put on the screen for you now. I won't go through and list it, so if you want to pause the video and have a look, uh, by all means do, but we've uh, we've got a number of clubs just taking two picks in you know, Brisbane and Sydney, for instance. Uh, the Bulldogs, interestingly, are going to potentially take four picks, it's reported. Uh, the most picks will probably be West Coast and North with five each. West Coast in particular could go with four and then leave one for the mid-season draft. That's true of most clubs. Geelong as well, probably have they have five list spots. They're a tricky one to predict because I suspect they will do some live trading as will other clubs. Um, they could take five, but I've got them taking four because most of their picks are at the back end and they'll probably pass and leave one for the mid-season draft. So going to have a crack at predicting all 58 or it's not really meant to be an accurate prediction, but more just uh, a one way the draft could go. And I've made a few changes from last times as well because you only have to change a few picks um, and then suddenly the, the whole sequence will change, um, but it's good fun to do. Before we get into the draft, guys, we do have a goal of trying to get 50% of the people who watch this channel subscribe to the channel. As it stands, we're currently at 48%, and that's the highest number I've seen uh, for some time on this channel, 48%. So if we could nudge it up to closer to 50, that'd be great. All you have to do is subscribe. If you're not subscribed, it'd be much appreciated. Cool, so with 58 picks, there's not a lot of time to waste with this particular draft. Let's uh, kick it off with a few easy ones. West Coast is gonna select Harley Reid, assuming there's no trade. Then the bid for Gold Coast, Jed Walter, will come shortly after at pick two, bid on by North Melbourne and it will definitely be matched by the Gold Coast Suns. At pick three, I'm going again with Colby McKercher to North Melbourne, best available player. And I'd say a clear, slightly ahead of the next best talent. So the first place I'm gonna go different with this particular draft, I've been going hard on Daniel Curtin to North Melbourne. To mix it up a little bit, I'll put Zane Dersma. I don't really know which way they'll go, but I guess I suppose the logic would be if they've got five picks in the first round, which I believe they do, I think their last pick will come in at 23, then they're probably in a position to just go best available and hope to pick up a tall later. So they don't need to go for a bit of a reach in Dan Curtin. So let's just say in this instance, Zane Dersma joins North Melbourne, which means Hawthorne, who I previously have had getting Zane Dersma, will probably then go Dan Curtin. So I think the one thing to bear in mind is they are going to get Will McCabe later in this draft as a key defender, but I think Daniel Curtin presents a bit of a point of difference as a as a more of a rebounding defender who could potentially play midfield. So that's my logic for them not double dipping on a key defender. They may see it as Curtin is not a true key defender. The Western Bulldogs, I am denied about Sanders here, but I'm going to go again with Nick Watson as the best available small forward. I think they're in a position to take a risk with him considering they get two first rounders anyway. Ethan Reed, the bid then comes from Melbourne um, on the basis they're kind of wouldn't mind another ruck, so they're the team that bids on Ethan Reid, so he comes in at pick seven with Gold Coast matching that, so he joins the Suns. So Melbourne's pick is another interesting one. So I've previously been talking about um, Nate Caddy, but somebody correctly pointed out in the comments recently that Melbourne have drafted Jacob Van Roy and Matthew Jefferson in the last two drafts, so them necessarily going for a key forward, it's not a given. You could argue that all of Jefferson, Van Roy, and, and Caddy all have the vastly different key forwards, but I, I think that's a fair argument to make. So I'll say they replenish their midfield with Tasmanian Riley Sanders. GWS come in at pick nine and take James Leake, the, uh, the running defender who's a bit versatile. He's from Tasmania. So that sort of satisfies the, the notion from Toomey anyway that he is likely to be a top 10 pick. I couldn't really see it before, but if this is the way the draft goes, then probably GWS at pick nine, which leads Geelong to pick Nate Caddy, the uh, nephew of their former player, Josh as a key forward replacement long-term to guys like Hawkins and Cameron. Uh, you can never have enough gun key forwards and Geelong are looking to replenish their entire list. So that's the top 10 done. 
Essendon on the board now. Previously had James Leake at this pick. He's now not available. So I've got them taking Caleb Windsor as an attacking midfielder with a bit of uh, outside class and polish. Um, he adds something different to what they've probably already got as a really quality wingman, in my opinion. Then Adelaide, interestingly here. Again, another team that probably be looking at a key defender, but considering they have a number of picks around that 20 range as well, they're probably in a position to go best available. So now I have them taking Darcy Wilson, joining the Adelaide Crows as a bit of a forward utility, potentially outside mid at AFL level. Then Melbourne's on the clock, and I've got them doing two bids. So they'll bid for Jordan Croft. Why not? Uh, this is about his range. So Jordan Croft will get matched as an, a, a father-son bid to the Western Bulldogs. And then they'll bid again on Gold Coast Jake Rogers, which again will be matched. So the Bulldogs and the Gold Coast Suns jump ahead of Melbourne in the queue there. So Melbourne now have their second pick, which will probably be their final pick from all reports. Now, there's a player who slid down the order here a little bit, Connor O'Sullivan. Again, I probably would have had him go to Adelaide. However, Adelaide's logic probably being there might be another key back at one of their second or third picks. So Melbourne do really well in this draft, getting uh, the Lark medalist midfielder, as well as one of the best key backs in this year's draft. So Sydney then are at pick 16 again. I've made the argument they're probably looking for a key back with this pick because they're getting Caden Cleary as an academy pick in the second round. So in the last video, I had them bolting on Zane Zakostelsky. I'm going to back that in. I just like it. It's a sexy sort of pick for, or like a sexy claim for a big bolter. And I think he fits the bill nicely and fits the need. Sydney do like their West Australian players. They've drafted heavy out of West Australia in recent times. And uh, I do think this kid will bolt early in the draft. And yeah, I'm happy with that one. So St Kilda now back on the board. And uh, this one, I previously have had Hardeman a few times. Thought I'd mix it up a little bit and go with a player who's probably more suited to their actual needs in Colton Tholstrup. This is probably the early part of his range. He's not expected to go um, you know, any earlier than this really. Maybe in the top 15 or so. But I think his dynamic nature, he's an aggressive and skillful and fairly polished forward who could potentially roll through the midfield as well. So I think he fits their needs better. And so that then brings Adelaide back on the clock. So obviously they overlooked Conor O'Sullivan at their first pick as a key defensive option, but there's still a pretty good one on the board in Ollie Murphy. So he'll go to the Adelaide Crows, which gives them a combination of, uh, was it Darcy Wilson and Ollie Murphy. So, so far Adelaide are very happy with their picks, I would imagine. North Melbourne are then technically on the clock. This is where a bid, I imagine, comes for Hawthorne's father-son in Will McCabe. North Melbourne probably on the market for a key back. Will McCabe's probably the next best available one. This is about the range for Will McCabe, so Hawthorne will match it, and they'll get Curtin and McCabe to their back line. But again, two different style of players. So now, North Melbourne back on the clock. Have they, They've gotten McKercher and Dersma, so two small players uh, in the fact that they're non-key position. This time I see them potentially going for the best ruck available. So they've got three of the next four picks. And so this pick they'll be considering who is GWS likely to take that, uh, that we want. So they'll, they'll probably, may, well, maybe not reach, but they'll take Will Green here, hoping that GWS don't take him. So uh, they get a 204 centimeter ruckman. That's a good result for their, their list balance as much as anything. So GWS have the one pick sandwiched in between. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna pause the video there for one moment to bring you an important message from Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, as we wrap up the 2023 season, it's time to map out your goals for next season. Now, if you're a young footballer or general athlete, actually, your coach may have highlighted areas for improvement going into next year, such as adding muscle mass, improving your running ability, or enhancing your explosiveness. Now, you probably know where you roughly wanna be by the end of preseason, but you're probably unsure about the most effective way to get there. Now, now, helpfully, Druzy has three years experience working with elite level footballers. As a result, he's learned and applied strength and conditioning strategies that will help deliver concrete results. Now, these results that you're gonna get go beyond just mere numbers, you know, superficial stuff like increasing your bench press or trimming a couple of seconds off your 2km time trial. The methods that you get through the Druzy's Athlete Academy are actually tailored to your specific needs as an athlete. Now, beyond these superficial quantifiable gains, the feedback that the athletes at Druzy's Athlete Academy often give are that they're training has actually translating in their game going to another level. Some of the feedback has been that people are able to tackle with more force or confidently break away from contests, they're able to kick further and being stronger in marking contests. Now you know where you want to be by the end of pre-season. Druzy has the experience and knowledge and results to get you where you want to be. Now there's a limited time offer through Druzy's Athlete Academy where there are 10 different 
free one week trials. So essentially all you have to do to express interest in this is go find Drew's Athlete Academy on Instagram and DM him the message free preseason. I'll leave the information of how to contact Drewzy in the description of this video. So these one week trials are fantastic because obviously with no strings attached, you can experience the program risk free. Take action today, start building the foundations for a really strong next season. And if you do end up going through a program for Drewzy's Athlete Academy, remember to use the code TRUE4020 for 20% off. Thanks guys, we'll get back to the video now. And that's where I see them taking Lance Collard. So I previously had him going to North, but at this pick with the available players, GWS would probably take the punt on Lance Collard. I have suggested in recent times I could see Collard sliding a little bit, but on talent, this is actually probably a bargain. So then North Melbourne are back on the clock with two consecutive picks. They're probably going to be looking for list balance now. They've had uh, an amazing midfielder in Colby McKercher, a dynamic forward, a ruckman. So I'm going to have them taking a running defender in Riley Hardiman. This is about his range. He slid a little bit in my rankings, but again, it's kind of even around this part of the draft. But he adds a lot of rebound, spe speedy sort of player. And then to finalize the, the draft haul, I've got them looking at probably at a key back. I think that's necessary. And a lot of the good ones are gone by their, by these picks, which is probably an argument to perhaps go for Curtin at four. But if they're going to reach for a tall, which clubs often do when they exit drafts early, I will probably say Ari Schoenmaker from Tasmania as a 194 centimeter key defensive prospect. So while he's probably not the next best available player, he's probably there on need. And that gives North Melbourne a really good balance to this draft. Then we have Collingwood entering the draft for the first time. There's a player that has slid a little bit and I think is actually better than this in terms of rankings in Archie Roberts, a running defender. This is clearly just a, a pick based on best available rather than a specific need for Collingwood. Adelaide uh, next up. Then I have them bidding on an academy player from Sydney in Caden Cleary. This is about his range. Why Adelaide? Well, I think Sydney bid on Makalani last year. So this is probably a little bit of petty revenge, but it doesn't really matter where he goes. He's going to go to Sydney. So Adelaide back on the clock. So they've got their, um, their forward mid in uh, Wilson. They've got their key back in Murphy. Again, I'd probably be looking for the midfield and maybe some height in that midfield as well. And they take Charlie Edwards, who I think is a really good value selection, good balance of inside and out, and probably adds something a little bit different to um, what off the top of my head is a fairly small midfield at Adelaide. So where are we now? St Kilda at pick 27, probably a case of best available. Harry Demetia is probably next cab off the rank really fast inside mid. So they address their midfield needs after taking Falstrup a forward with pick one, pick 17, sorry, I meant St Kilda's pick one. They balance this with another, probably utility at the next level, but he does add some leg speed to that St Kilda midfield anyway. Carlton, now probably on the market for a small forward. There's a, a few to choose from, or at least a couple, but probably the best one based on the consensus is Phoenix Gothard, the same player I had them taking in my last Phantom Draft. West Coast now enter the draft again at pick 29, and they'll probably go for a local WA talent in Clay Hall again. Same pick I had in the last Phantom draft, but I can see this kid appealing to West Coast, and they do need to replenish their midfield. So Geelong now at pick 30. This is probably a case of best available, so I've given them Nate Caddy. They're probably looking at transitioning all aspects of their list over time. So I've got them plucking Jack Delane from South Australia, a really good, crafty, productive small forward. And uh, I think he would give them probably the, a good value pick based on best available. So now Carlton is back on the clock, having taken one pick so far in a small forward in Goddard. Um, again, when you look at their list needs, you know, they're pretty pretty sound from a spine, spine point of view. So I'd probably pick, a, you know, maybe more of a utility in Harvey Johnston, who can play as a bit of a forward midfielder from Victoria. Richmond entered the draft for the first time, and I think their needs will probably be just turning over, well, young talent in general, but particularly around the midfield. So one player I see them taking a liking to is Cooper Simpson, who has a really, really good highlights package, I reckon, really dynamic, fast inside mid, lots of class, and uh, I can see him really appealing to Richmond. So that one makes sense. Next up, the Brisbane Lions. I have them bidding on Will Graham from the Gold Coast Suns Academy. So that's where the fourth Gold Coast Academy Suns play will fall. Why? Queensland team, Queenslander. Again, it doesn't really matter exactly where we plot the bid. This is probably roughly around the range and uh, he will end up at the Gold Coast Suns anyway. So Brisbane now, this, t this pick is tough. I don't really have a good feel for what their needs are. Again, probably ignoring the midfield. 
maybe a key position type or a utility type. So I've got a player that I think will go around this range in Nathan Philactides, a small defender out of Victoria. So it doesn't really feel like a Brisbane pick. So this is the one that I kind of um denied about, but he's probably there on talent and uh, I could see him playing early for a team that is quite mature. Essendon now have their second pick of this year's draft and having picked a classy outside midfielder, I see them balancing it with a big bodied inside mid. So that's something that they've kind of been crying out for for a number of years. And I've got them taking George Stevens at this selection who last I checked is 101 kilos and he's only 189 centimeters. So doesn't really get much more big bodied than that. And this is about his range. And I think Essendon would be a good fit bearing in mind that have one more selection in this draft. Collingwood, I've got them taking Archer Reed. I've made this point a few times, but I can see them pay, taking a project key forward. You know, they don't really have any long-term solution in, t- in terms of a key forward, and they're well placed to take, you know, a more of a risk on a, pr- a speculative key forward prospect. So Archer Reed to Collingwood, I'm happy with. Fremantle enter the draft for the first time at pick 37. And again, we know that they've highlighted their list needs as being mostly focused around the forward half of the ground there. They said publicly that they're happy with their midfield and their defense. So Cohen Sanchez, the local small forward, sort of comes in to replace Lockie Schulz, and um, I can see him being a favorite there at Fremantle. Essendon now round out their draft with two GF, uh, taking a Hawthorne Academy pick a little bit early, but it adds some nice balance to their draft as a running defender with a bit of leg speed at the back half. So potentially they could have addressed that need earlier in this particular draft, but 2GF gives them some nice balance there. Now West Coast back on the clock. Again, I've got them taking the same player that I had in the last Phantom, and that's Angus Hasty. I just think his rebound leg speed and a little bit of class will stand out to West Coast in terms of adding something that the list is a little bit bereft of at the moment. So Angus Hasty from Victoria, it could be a number of other players, but uh, I think this one makes sense. Then Brisbane have pick 40. This will be their final selection that is expected. I think they can take three or four, but they're more likely to take two is what I've been reading. So I've got them taking a key forward prospect in Riley Weatherall. He's 197 centimeters, 93 kilos, so pretty ready-made. Uh, well, not ready-made, but he is physically developed. You know, 93 kilos is not light for an 18-year-old uh, key forward. And again, they're in a position to take the punt on a young key forward prospect with midfield talent um, plentiful over the last few years and certainly next year as well. I'm aware that I'm moving through this pretty fast, guys, but I'm trying not to make the duration of this video blow out. As we get closer to the draft, I'll probably do a longer one. Um, yeah, why not? So St. Kilda then have pick 41. I've got them bidding on a Western Bulldogs Next Generation Academy talent in Luam and Luau. So if this pick goes before 40, the Bulldogs can't match it. As it's after 40, I have the Bulldogs matching this bid and they'll add him to their list. So St. Kilda then have another pick. Again, probably, uh, who have they taken so far? They've taken Tholstrop, they've taken Demetia. So to add a little bit of something different, they'll go a project tall forward in Luke Lloyd from Victoria. Richmond now take uh, their second pick, and I think this is where they'll exit the draft at pick 43. And I've got them taking another midfielder in Will Brown, who's a pretty big bodied 194 centimeter, but very classy midfielder out of Victoria. And he played for the Sandringham Dragons and was best of field in the grand final from memory. So he's one that stands out for me. GWS then bid on a Fremantle Next Generation Academy ruck in Mitch Edwards. This guy has slid down the rankings a long way. And from what I've read, there is a chance he goes undrafted. So uh, we'll see what happens there, but GWS add a young ruck, or at least try to. But in this scenario, I think Fremantle, with the picks they've got, they could match the bid, but I think they're fairly happy with their ruck situation as it stands, having drafted Trent Noble last year. And I wouldn't be surprised if Fremantle let GWS have him. So that's what I'm going to predict. Mitch Edwards goes to GWS. Fremantle then have the next pick anyway, and they'll take Logan Morris, 191 centimeter, undersized key forward from Victoria. Again, just adding some more options underneath guys like Amos and Tracy and stuff like that. So a little bit more forward half talent for Fremantle. West Coast then have the next pick, and I've got them taking a bit of an underrated Ruckman in this year's draft in Taylor Goad, who stands at 207 centimeters. I've read a little bit that there's some interest in him from a number of clubs, but West Coast included, and I think West Coast will want to add a tall in this draft mix, so he becomes the first tall 
taken uh, by them. So Freeman will then have the next pick. Again, this is the part of the draft where the, the order is contracting because there's a lot of academy picks going left, right, and center. And it's possible I've got it wrong, but I've got Freeman on next. And they'll take the romantic pick in Aiden O'Driscoll and reunite him with his brother and sister at the Fremantle Dockers. I'm kind of plucking that one. Does he actually go here? It's possible. Probably about his range. It's possible he gets taken here. Hawthorne then, I think, have the next two picks based on other clubs passing and exiting out of this draft. So at 48 and 49, I've got Hawthorne taking Ashton Moyer, another player who slid a long way, but has undeniable talent as a medium forward option. And then with the second pick, I've got them taking a West Australian young key forward in Sam Van Royen, the younger brother of Jacob from the Melbourne Footy Club. So just a speculative key forward prospect and uh, some nice forward line options to balance out uh, two defenders at the start of the draft. Richmond, I made a mistake. Sorry, they will take three selections it is expected in this year's draft, and they re-enter the draft at pick 50. Sorry, Tigers fans, you probably already clicked off this video, but I've got them taking a rung pro ruck prospect in Vigo Vicentini, 204 centimeters, 99 kilos. They just lost Ivan Soldo, so this is just another way of adding another young ruck prospect to their young list or transitioning list, perhaps. The Western Bulldogs then take their final pick and they take Tarkin O'Leary, 178 centimeter midfielder out of Victoria. Uh, Carlton then take their final pick and take Jack Callanan, who probably could go earlier than this, another 179 centimeter midfielder out of Tasmania. So we're getting into the speculative parts of the draft now. Port Adelaide enter the draft at pick 73, or at least this was pick 73 and is now pick 52. I've got them taking the best available South Australian talent in Will Patton, 192 centimeter sort of rebounding defender. I'm so sorry, guys. I have just realized the enormous mess Geelong then obviously needing to take some picks at the back end of this draft will go best available with Joel Frazier, another midfielder who could go earlier than this out of Victoria. Carlton finish up with Bodie Ryan, 187 centimeter defender out of South Australia. Again, probably don't need to replenish their midfield as it currently stands. West Coast, uh, for the sake of things, will take a fifth pick in this year's draft. They have the list spot and I've got them taking a small midfielder in Reese Torrent. Uh, from the Peel Thunder. Geelong up next with pick 57 again. This will be the fourth and final pick I've got them taking. Will Lawrence, another midfielder, 186 centimeters from Victoria. And then finally, Port Adelaide. They could just exit the draft after one pick. They're allowed to, I believe. But for the sake of Port fans, I'll include them having a second pick and they'll take Kane McAuliffe a big bodied inside midfielder from South Australia. So that wraps up my draft, guys. Uh, that is my crack at all 58 picks, I think it was in the end. So let me know in the comments what you thought, what you do differently. Again, it gets really subjective at the back end of the draft as well. So there's heaps of players named that probably five or six that probably won't get drafted. And in replacement, five or six players I didn't mention that will get drafted. So it's a little bit hard to tell, but I've had a crack. It's good fun. And I think I've got a rough idea of how many um, picks clubs will actually take. Again, I could have made some mistakes with that draft order at the end. It's, uh, it's a little bit hard because points get absorbed and then the order changes and then all the clubs uh, points actually change because the order changes, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's, that's a little bit too nitty gritty even for a footy nerd like me. So I've had a crack. Let me know what you think in the comments. And again, I know this was a fast video, but perhaps closer to the draft, I'll do an hour long one and uh, we'll go from there. But thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.